why doesn't Buffalo Airways just go buy a C-130 Hercules? That is a question uh, I've been getting asked a lot in the YouTube comments. Uh, and today I wanna answer it because it is not just a simple cut and dry answer like we ran into with the Basler video when it came basically just down to cost. The Herc's a different situation, even though it is expensive. Uh, there is Basler's, there's Turbine DC3 operating in Canada. Various companies have them, but yet there's not one single civilian Hercules in Canada operating right now. Uh, did you know PWA back in the day actually was operating up to nine Hercules in the Northwest Territories alone at one time? So where are they now? This has to be a bigger question than just pure money. Let's discover that right now. Let's go into answering some of your questions like why don't we just use ex-military Hercs? We're gonna get into that right now. Uh, but first, I want to tell you guys what we use that isn't a Hercules. It is a sister ship, the, the Lockheed Electra, the L188. Uh, normally is where I'm standing right now. There's a couple of them. They're actually both out working, which even adds more to the mystery. There was less Electras built than Hercules's. In fact, these two Electras that are normally here are the only two cargo Electras in the world currently operating. So why isn't there Hercs? Why isn't there more Hercs everywhere? Let's go in the hangar and figure that out, folks, because I think we're going to find some stuff we weren't expecting. Okay, folks, let's tackle, um, I think, the easiest one, but it might not be. Uh, why can't we just use ex-military Herculeses uh, here at Buffalo, you know, they're always on the market for a couple million dollars, A models especially. Uh, you would think that we could just go buy one and full of cargo and start making money. You think pretty much anyone could, it, it, wish you could, uh, but you can't. Uh, Ex-military aircraft are not certifiable here in Canada. But look behind me, Curtis C-46, ex-military. Look at our Plane Savers DC-3 DTD, ex-military. And that is where the problem began, folks. Look at DTD. DTD was in D-Day. It was a warbird. It got shipped back to Canada. They reconverted it to a passenger airliner and it worked uh, with TCA, the, the top airline here in Canada. And it was a warbird. Why did they do that? Because it was cheaper to buy an ex-military aircraft than it was to call Douglas and buy a brand new airplane. And there lies the problem, folks. This isn't, I guess, official news but it is a lot better for an aircraft company to sell you a new airplane than it is for you to go to a boneyard buy an airplane and then operate it commercially so around the 1960s i believe they got wise to this and now x military aircraft are not certifiable in canada the dc3s c46s dc4s are kind of grandfathered in um if you know more about that procedure, let me know in the comments, but that is just quickly getting through here. So when you see a Hercules on the internet for sale for two, three million dollars, you know, like an A model, uh, you can't use them. There is ways around that if you want to run it restricted category. Um, it's a lot easier in the States than it is here in Canada. Uh, like Colson, their Hercs are ex-military. Awesome airplanes, uh, all have N numbers on them because they're US but they operate under a restricted category. But for a full commercial airplane, uh, we can't go to the boneyard and pick up an airplane. I can personally buy a Herc, an A-model Herc, and run around with all my stuff, but I'm not allowed to make money with it. And if you can't make money with it in aviation, you can't really fly. Uh, yeah, does that make sense? <laughs> Hopefully it does. Uh, that is really, really, really quickly. Um, but let's move on to the, the, the bigger question is, uh, where did all the Hercs go? Uh, there used to be lots, now there's none. So let's go figure that out. Okay, so now we know we can't fly the C-130 because it's a military airplane, but Lockheed was smart. They made a civilian version, which is the L-100. Now that is the version that PWA was flying when I mentioned earlier, when there was up to nine Hercs flying in Northern Canada, in Northwest Territories at one time. And lucky enough, I have Dan Jones here. Dan flew the last commercial Hercules flight in Canada with a Canadian airplane. What year? Uh, 2015. 2015. So Dan also, as you know, flies our Lockheed Electra. Dan's here to tell us now uh, where the L-100s, the civilian Herculeses, have gone. So Dan, what uh, what two uh, 
uh, Herc's were here in Canada. At, at the end, uh, we had a serial number 4600, which was CGUSI, and serial number 4799, which was HPW. And when First Air got out of the Herc business, uh, HPW was the first one to go. It went to SAF Air in uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. And then uh, Uzi went to Linden Air Cargo in Alaska about three months later or two months later or something like that. I attempted to retire. I didn't make it quite one day and um, I ended up going to work for SAF Air. So I went basically overseas. My girlfriend at the time, she said, uh, she said, you're probably the only man in history that would travel halfway around the world to make sure his old airplane had a good home. So, uh, and, and ironically enough, when I went there, I flew all the other ones, but I never flew HPW. She was on the Red Cross contract and I was on the UN contract, so I saw her a lot. I was with them for about two years and then they decided to sell out to Linden Air Cargo in Alaska. It's my understanding that Linden bought the whole works. So, world changes. So now you're back flying the sister ship, the uh, Lockheed Electric. Yep, I ended up flying with a lot of NWTR guys and a lot of the guys on the Herc, uh, Bill Lavelle being one of them, who was the guy who really taught me how to fly a Herc here. Um, and he flew Electra a lot, and he and his analogy was, was if the Herc is the burly big brother, then the Electra is the hot little sister. So, uh, so it was. Uh, he said, he said before you retire, he says get your hands on an Electra because you're gonna like it. And he was right. He said, I love it. They've been fun. It's been I've been very privileged to fly both. Thank you, Dan. Dan, explain to us where the Hercs went, um, but we got to ask the question: Why was there nine Hercs? here in Yellowknife at one time and uh, why there isn't any Hercs here. There was basically a lot of operators operating Hercs all around the world and now just you know as time goes on Linden, our friends at Linden uh, Air Cargo are now have basically most of all commercial Hercs operating out of Alaska but still doing all the work all around the world. Speaking of work we got Joe McBride here. Dad the key question to the video is there was up to nine hercs at one time in the northwest territories what were they doing well that'd be uh, over the christmas of 1978 in hay river they were uh, all at, they're trucking all the oil field equipment to hay river and these nine hercs were flying out of hay river to melville island which is uh, an island up uh, north of victoria island uh, west of resolute bay where's big oil play there and of course there was um, wells being drilled everywhere and uh, the Hercs were supplying these oil rigs and of course with the uh, National Energy Program these oil wells are all capped and uh, the reserves are there but they're capped and of course there's no further need for nine Hercules so they, they went to other parts of the world and then uh, tell there was just two left here at NWTR and they were doing good while they're building the mines, but once they built the mines, all of a sudden the mines come up with 737 strips because the mines went from construction, which is a Herc, to production, which is a 737, because now you need people to produce the product. So the Hercs have faded away, and in Yellowknife today, you know, we, um, the capacity in town, we can do just about everything that needs to be done. The odd time, there's an outsized piece, we'll bring Linden in, or Linden will be brought in by one of the mining companies, and, and they come in and, um, and do that one or two trips a month that we can't do. And they're just uh, across the line here as in, uh, you know, Alaska, which is strictly west of us. So that is the, the Herc world, right, today. So when uh, the world evolves around again and need that oil, they start on capping those wells, uh, we'll be running to the bank and I'll be hawking you at the bank to buy a Herc. <laughs> that's perfect. Thanks, Dad. So uh, that's a perfect segue. What my father said is that uh, there is another option is you can actually go buy a brand new Hercules. Yes, a brand new L100J model from Lockheed. You can go pay money, get a brand new one, but it's at 70 million dollars yes folks 70 million dollars um if you adjust for uh price inflation and uh, all that funny stuff uh that is double of what uh, the brand new hercs were uh when the l1 came out so hopefully you guys learned something that was a, a quick journey around the hangar we're back kind of where we started 
with a trusty old C46, nice big door, heavy floor, ready to go to work. How was it, Chucky? Pretty good, you saw? Good? It's still a little chilly up there, it's minus 30 something. So, How'd the Electra handle today? Good, good, real good. You almost think she was a new airplane, you know? <laughs> <laughs>